Patrick Fiore has honored the traditions of painting and illustrations with his mastered skills and creative vision that pays tribute to his profession as artist and educator. His passionate activism for art as the ultimate expression of life experiences across the generations of America and his engagement of students and adults is a continuous reminder of what it is America and what we should honor and learn from the lives of the people. To live in and be American is to live in a way of life that continuously reshapes itself to form our nation in the present. Some of history is being rewritten to bring the lives and experiences of many to view. Visual art brings our stories to life in visual language in a way written words cannot. Uh, the sketch that I'm working on is based on reference related to um, coal mining in America. Um, in particular, different cultural groups who immigrated to um, different parts of the country, mostly northeast, and different mining that was done relative to them. This sketch in particular, um, I'm being developing out of warm and cool colors just as an underpainting. And I'll alternate from this palette of basically orange, blue, or burnt sienna and blue mixing to the neutral to create different aspects of light and also local color. Um, as I develop it further, I'll bring a full palette of colors in that will relate to the surrounding uh, situation. But right now I'm just trying to develop the expression um, and a little bit of the uh, reflective color. Well, initially, um, with the development of these characters, I'm using real models. Um, really looking for people culturally or ethnically correct for the situation, so there's that accuracy. Um, and hiring models, uh, usually I work from a sketch first, where I'm uh, basically um, coming up with the concept and then actually shooting the photography based on my sketch. So the photography is never anything that pushes the project, the drawing comes first. Howardson is usually remembered for the book that he wrote, the, uh, the People's History of the United States. But we should remember that he wrote many other things. And one of his most recent books, uh, before he passed away, was You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train. And I think in some ways this symbolizes the life of Howard Zinn. That is, Howard Zinn was never neutral. Howard Zinn always took a stance. Howard Zinn always made his voice heard and tried to encourage other people to make their voices heard. That in some ways, his, his life, should re, he should be remembered as an activist. Recently, I showed a short interview um, that was online to a group of students in my course on historical methods to get them to think about the uses of history and to think about Howard Zinn's position um, that history could also be, be used or employed to somehow make a change not just to tell what happened in the past, which of course is what he is doing, but to challenge the way we understand the past and to think about it and to think about our lives today and, make, and use history and the way we view history to improve the world we live in right now. He acted very much as a pacifist. He made it very clear that his position on all issues had to do with preventing conflict, that he saw no reason why war should ever, that, that war should be an option. Our American history is a world history, a place for indigenous people, immigrants, and refugees. Daily we connect to that world in new and powerful ways, some positive, some negative. We have an opportunity to establish a creative life that honors the individual and makes living a sustainable act by learning who we are, where we came from, how we are connected and how we can contribute to our communities near and far. The arts are often perceived as entertainment. The notion of relegating our creative potential to a leisure time activity has echoed through American society so profoundly, 
arts budgets are seen as disposable when these debates occur. The irony of reducing arts budgets in a time requiring creative solutions evidences the topsy-turvy nature of a society that forgets the value of personal expression and creative analysis. The visual and performing arts, the humanities on the broadest scale, hold great potential for engaging citizens in the struggle for creative solutions to our most practical and urgent problems. This isolated view of the arts as a budget line to be eliminated dismisses any thoughtful application for the arts. As the archaeologist, anthropologist, and historian know, we have the ability to learn from our past in powerful ways by exploring the arts of our cultures. The rich heritage of people and places, history and families can be brought forward to build pride, beginning with very modest acts, especially with children through creative, expressive outlets. Often neglected in abandoned communities, some perceived as a liability, hold rich reserves of culture. By excavating those hidden abilities, individuals and communities expose a wealth of opportunities reframed. Artistic expression may offer the spark that illuminates a less direct but no less productive path to rebuilding communities. In 1880, Gage led 102 favor women to the polls in New York State, which allowed women to vote in school districts where they had paid their taxes. Her lifelong model appears on her gravestone in Fayetteville. There is a word sweeter than mother, home or heaven. That word is liberty. I would personally like to thank Ms. Gage for paving the way for women to do great things in a time where women were looked at as nothing but housewives and second class citizens. She was very brave to challenge the laws made by men to fight not only for women's suffrage, but true equality, life, liberty, and the pursuit of all United States citizens' happiness. I want to thank women like Ms. Gage for being brave, risking all they had to earn equality for women, which makes the study of women's history possible. She was a courageous and smart woman who will be remembered not only for her great deeds, but her nobility. A gesture elegant or distraught, hands and faces expressing life's experiences, the moment across generations and through the arc of history, individual and community loss and joy, the story of being human in physical starkness, and the inner world of our minds and beliefs. From this wealth of human expression, I'm inspired to paint images filtered through my connection of being one of these, human in here, in the present. I've been creating social commentaries through words and images for over 20 years. As I set out to create a new series of paintings, I evaluated my perspective as commentator and examined the formation of my point of view. I've discussed the quest for an authentic voice with other artists from a variety of backgrounds. It became clear through these dialogues that art could transcend personal identity to a human voice, one in common with all our experiences. I had been driven by that same polemic. Artists cultivate the diversity of life. Art does not aim for perfection, but exists in the moment, engaging in the recreation of a parallel human experience. Creativity launches the individual beyond ideological separation to an eternal human communication. Art exists as a social entity reflecting humanity and nature, while nourishing without regard to historical period or culture. This journey often leads to a redefinition of problems that have remained elusive to our understanding and are beyond our knowledge. 